Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Exhausting Monday for me. So this morning, I want to talk about dealing with fear. Because fear is a strong emotion that closely related to anxiety and worry. It often occurs as a result of some threat or situations of danger that is apparently unavoidable. One thing we learned from COVID-19 is how oh, suddenly a pandemic can strike fear in the hearts of an entire nation. We saw people panic buying, and now we see people still living with this fear. Some people try to mask that fear by um, just pretending that it does not exist. But as we know, the numbers are arriving, people are getting sick, unexplainably sick. So people's hearts are fearing them with fear. There's been an increase in heart failures and heart issues, especially among the young. Long COVID has been longer than long because people are still having symptoms two, three years on. People, it makes you wonder, what kind of a virus is this? <laughs> that two, three, I mean, everybody's trying to tell you that it's like the flu. Who gets the flu for three years in a row? <laughs> There's no such thing as the long flu. Wake up, folks. But people become fearful for different reasons. And there's no hope in the health system. Because if you call the paramedics, they're just not going to come for five to seven hours. And that's all reality. You're better off taking a taxi if you can get one to get to the, get to the, to the, to the, to the ER. Annies are full, full to their brim. People become fearful that each person they met might be carrying the coronavirus and infect them. That was the past, but now we're just infecting each other because we're post-COVID and there's no need for a mask. Each cough creates anxiety that they might have the virus. I mean, come on, I've been on a few flights lately I'm and a few places and in public. And trust me, there's some ugly coughs out there that you know people are carrying stuff. Now, every time someone sneezes, they get the eye, their hearts beat faster. But the ironic thing is, the people were coughing, not even covering it up. So how do we deal with fear? We've gone past the initial fear and initial, oh, every cough has sneezed the COVID, so now we're normalizing it. We just see in China, they're demonstrating for their rights, their rights to a little bit more freedom from the lockdown system. Most of them were in mask, but yet the virus is spreading. Well, I guess the surgical mask is not a 95 mask, which if you're in a certain area for too long, a surgical mask will not protect you. What can deliver us from all worse fears? People are dying in droves. The Bible tells us that people are gonna die. Is God taking his people home or is people dying as a result of the chaos and what's going on in this world we live in? It might be more accurate to say that we can de deliver us from those fears. The ancient scriptures are filled with more than 3,000 promises of God's love and care. Many of the Bible's promises are specifically encouraging in times of a crisis. Clinging to the promises of God, we are filled with hope when we face catastrophes. We confront them with confidence in Christ who stands by our side. We have the assurance of the one who said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, Hebrews 13 verse 5. One of the greatest Bible stories on overcoming fear takes place in an oft forgotten story tucked away in the Bible's Old Testament. The king of Syria had surrounded the Israelites' army by the city of Dothan. The king's intent was to capture Elisha. Every time the king of Syria had made a battle move, the prophet Elisha had warned the captain of Israel's armies. The Syrian king became so furious. The only way he could win the battle was to capture and kill Elisha. He brought all the forces in his mighty army to surround the city so that the escape was absolutely impossible. When Elisha's servant woke early in the morning and saw the city surrounded by the enemy's army with hundreds of horses and chariots, he was seized with fear. Worry filled his little heart. Death seems inevitable. Trembling with terror, he came to Elisha. But finally, the word of God came out. Alas, my master, what shall we do? 
Read the story in 2 Kings 6, verse 15. Elisha's answer is classic. It provides a life-changing principle for all those who are grappling with fear. It gives comfort to those who are consumed by worry and anxiety. Elisha simply stated, do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are against us. Despite an almost impossible situation, God was still in control. And that's what a lot of people forget. In spite of all the pandemonium and all the pandemic and drama, God is still in control. He was still on his throne. He had a solution where there appeared to be no solution. He could make a way where there seems to be no way. Elisha prayed that his young servant would see the angelic armies of heaven surrounding them, protecting them, and eventually delivering them. Miraculously, God struck the Syrian armies with blindness and Elisha and his servant escaped. If our eyes are focused on the problem, fear will overcome us. If our eyes are fixed upon Jesus, the emotions of fear may still be present, but it will not cripple us. Fear will no longer have dominion over our lives. The answer to crippling fear is not that we will never be afraid. It is rather that we have one with us in our fears, strengthening us to go on no matter how we feel and not to focus on our feelings. We have one who is larger than our fears, bigger than our worries and greater than our anxieties by our side. And he has practical down to earth, real solution to our problems. The sense of the presence of God is an antidote to fear. We were created to live by faith, not be consumed by our fears. A popular 20th century preacher once said, I am inwardly fashioned for faith, not for fear. Fear is not my native land. Faith is. I am so made that worry and anxiety are sand in the machinery of life. Faith is the oil. I live better by faith and confidence than by fear, doubt, and anxiety. In anxiety and worry, my being is gasping for breath. These are not my native air. But in faith and confidence, I breathe freely. There are many native air. We were created to live a life of trust in the one who made us. Look beyond your fears to the Christ, who cares for you more than you will ever even think or know. That's our word this morning. For I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Isaiah 40 tells us, fear not, because God is with you. Sometimes we cannot see him. He's so quiet. And that too, I don't like. God's quiet frightens me. But even in those frightening moments, we still have to be still and recognize that the presence of the Lord is with us. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the reminder that we should not fear, that we can trust you in the times in our lives when, even when we feel afraid, we can still trust you. Lord, we surrender all our anxieties and all our fears to you this morning, and we ask you to come in and to take charge. Holy Spirit, we surrender to you and ask you to fill us up and help us to be bold and courageous, knowing that God is with us. Open our eyes so we can see, Lord. Like Elisha's servant, we can see, God, that those for us is more than those who are against us. Encourage our hearts and soul in you today and go ahead and fight our battles and blind the eyes of the enemies for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a blessed day.